Hey guys, Super Retro Kid here. I just uh, thought I'd make a video about my uh, Wii Duel. So the Wii Duel is a uh, recent project by Citrus 3000 PSI where he took the uh, GC Video X FPGA mod, or not GC Video X, the GC Video HDMI mod and uh, he adapted it to be an internal mod for the Nintendo Wii. So right now Citrus 3000 PSI or Dan Koontz, he's selling these kits online. That I think the pre-order is currently available. It's like Dan's Mod Shop. If you just Google Dan's Mod Shop, there you'll find his web store to purchase the pre-order for the board. And what it is is uh, the Nintendo Wii uh, when it was released, it only did AV and uh, uh, component. And what this does is this connects uh, a mini HDMI into the video chip on the Wii, bypassing like the, the DAC that was originally in the Wii. So there's no digital analog conversion. It stays digital through and through. So one of the things about the Wii is like the Wii is backwards compatible with GameCube games, but the Wii had an inferior component video output to the, to the GameCube. So inside of the Wii was, you know, all the GameCube guts to like play GameCube games perfectly. But the, and the, the component video cables for the Wii were really cheap in comparison to the GameCube where the component video cables are like hundreds of dollars now. But the component video uh, coming out of the Wii, the uh, digital analog converter that Nintendo used was kind of crappy. So you get an inferior output from the Wii. So what this mod does is not only does it give you a digital to digital HDMI output, but it also get, it also restores that component video to be on par with the with the GameCubes, which is really cool because the Wii you can buy high quality cables for under ten bucks that allow you to do components. So this mod gives you the best in uh, the best in digital HDMI for your flat screens, but it also gives you the best analog component video source to send to your RGB monitors and all your analog devices. So what I actually did was I bought a red Nintendo Wii and I bought one of these XCM third party cases and then I bought the mod or I bought the uh, the GC or the the Wii Dual you know GC video uh, kit from Citrus 3000 PSI and I bought a brand new fan to go on the back because I figured if I'm gonna have all this done I might as well do that as well and I I purchased the mod service from uh, Mobius Strip Tech and sent it all off to him and what I had asked him to do was use the entirety of the XEM case which is this third-party matte black case and he contacted me after installing the HDMI mod and he said that these top ports didn't line up properly and it's because of the manufacturing of this case. So I ultimately just didn't use them because I like to have that GameCube stuff available anyway. But then the other thing that happened was on the front of it, on the black front from the XEM case, the power button didn't work very well. And I had read that in uh, some threads online that the power button didn't work very well. So I ended up putting the original red one back on, which I was also I was thinking about doing anyway just to get this Wii logo on the front. And then this base station I also got from XCM. So I got, got this nice red base. And then I have the, the matte black uh, little disc underneath it. And I've... I've soft modded this Wii so that I can have uh, Wii and GameCube games through the USB port on the back. So now I'll just kind of hook it up to my TV and show you guys what it can do. 
And I also have this Monoprice wireless sensor bar, which I don't know if they're still on Monoprice or not, but I got a bunch of these for like $2 each. And you just put like four AAAs in them, and then you don't have to run a wire to your Wii. And I like Monoprice, so I just bought a bunch of them. So I'm gonna come in here and connect this up to the TV. So the way that I'm actually connecting it is I'm just gonna put the wireless sensor bar on here. And then I've got a, what I did was I took a, an M cable, a Marseille cable, the gaming edition one, and I took a regular HDMI to mini HDMI. And I'm just going to sit down the camera for a second while I hook this up. So I don't wanna scrape my new Wii. And these mini HDMIs are a little more difficult to get in than a regular one, but people, but these modders like to use them because they don't have to cut into the, the shells as much. Okay. So now I've got it hooked up next to my GameCube. And I'm just gonna plug my GameCube controller in right away. Because you have to use a GameCube controller to get into the uh, GC Video interface. I'm going to turn another light on here. Okay, so now I'm going to fire it up. Make sure my TV is on the right interface. HDMI 4. And you're going to see in the, oh, we already missed it, but in the upper right, you'll see when I select that input, it's going to say 1920 by 1080, 60, 60 hertz. And the way that I'm able to achieve that, let me sync the cable, or sync the controller here. I'm going to change my TV mode to widescreen. So I'm just going to the picture settings. I've got game mode on, picture mode, 16 by 9. So when I first hooked this up, I was just use I wasn't using the M cable. I was just using straight HDMI. And what I found was when I went into, like it looked, it looked a little better, but it didn't look amazing. So what I found was when I went into the options and went into the picture settings, let's see here, screen, TV resolution, it was set on 480i and 480p was grayed out, probably because I didn't have a component cable connected. And I like to set it on widescreen because when the Wii came out, we already had a lot of widescreen TVs. So a lot of the, pretty much all Wii games or all of them that I know of are compatible with widescreen. <clears throat> but then what I found by looking through the GC Video GitHub was if you connect a GameCube controller, you had to do LR, X, Y, and down, and you have to hold them for a few seconds to get the on-screen display up. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay. So that allowed me to get into the GC Video menu. So what I did in here, was I went into picture settings, I think. Nope, not picture settings. Let me go back. Other settings. Yeah, and I turned on that allow 480p. And then I also turned on display as 16 by nine for enhanced DVI mode. But this enable 480p makes it so that in the Wii's menu, even though you're only connected through HDMI, you can actually select 480p. 
and that made a world of difference in the quality of the picture. So I'm just going to go back here. Then the other thing is when you're done, make sure you hit store settings. So then you can see at the bottom there that I'm outputting 720 by 480p at 60. So what's cool about that is that's like the perfect signal for this M cable. These M cables are really good at upscaling and anti-aliasing 480p. So that's why my TV thinks that it's 1080 is be because my M cable is doing some processing without generating any lag. So you can just kind of see here that I have a real high fidelity coming from the Wii. And I have USB Loader GX so I can load all my games off of a uh, USB drive. And what's interesting about this mod and kind of the state of the Wii, so if you wanted to if you wanted to not have a modded out GameCube, like this GameCube, uh, the optical drive replacement, the Wasp, they're very rare and discontinued. And on the SD card, you can only do like up to 64 gigs. Where with a soft modded Wii, you can hook up any external USB hard drive and you can use an application on the Wii called Nintendo to play GameCube games off of USB. And now that this, this uh, video, or now that this display mod has come out, um, the video signal that you get out of a Wii is just as good as the video signal that you get out of a GameCube. So really, the Wii is not only a great Wii, but it's also like probably the preferable way to go if you're wanting to get the best GameCube out there without spending a bunch of money. The only thing is the models that can be modded with this HDMI mod are the later revisions. And like if you want the, the Wii to boot up straight into the homebrew channel where you can manipulate everything from a GameCube controller and not have to use a Wiimote, you have to have one of the earlier revisions. So if you have one of the earlier revisions, you can make it so that it boots up into a menu that is can be completely navigated by a GameCube controller and then you can get into the Nintendo Don't and play your GameCube games that way. But since this only works on, since this HDMI mod only works on later revision models of the GameCube, you have to go through this Wii menu, which means that you have to have a Wii mode. So that's the only real downfall in like, if you wanted to get a Wii and do this mod and only use it for GameCube. I mean, it's a slight inconvenience. It's not a major thing, but like if I didn't have a GameCube that was decked out this would by far be the more economical way to do GameCube. So I'll just fire up a game here and kind of show you guys what it looks like a little bit. I'm not really going to be able to play one-handed. And as you know, they just shut down the Wii eShop. So you can't purchase any of these, any of these eShop, these virtual console games anymore. I'll just kind of fire up some punch out. But this is definitely a cool mod for the Wii.
And a little bit of my backstory with the Wii is when the Wii came out, I was actually in line at GameStop. And I was like seventh in line, so I was like the second from last person to get one. And at GameStop on release day, these things were so like limited and like sought after that like they made you pre-order like two or three games and an accessory just to be able to pre-order a Wii. But I, I did it and then on launch day I remember getting a Wii and it just being pretty, pretty amazing for the time. So I guess my review of the Wii Duel would be that, you know, when I watched uh, Retro RGB's uh, review of the Wii Duel, he said that like you should only do it if you really love the Wii and that it's just a slight improvement. But I actually think that it's a pretty dramatic improvement in picture quality and I'd recommend it if you're, if you care enough to still play Wii. <laughs> the other thing I would say is if you don't already have a GameCube with an optical drive emulator, this would by far be the way to go. Just from a pricing, you know, because to get a GameCube, to get a GameCube with a digital port is probably like a hundred, hundred and twenty-five dollars. And then to get an optical drive emulator, if you can find one, you know, like the, the Wiki or the Wasp Fusion, you know, you can pay a hundred and fifty to five hundred dollars. And then the only real advantage of playing uh, having a decked out GameCube at that point versus having a mo soft modded Wii with this HDMI mod is that you can hook up the Game Boy Player and play your uh, Game Boy Advance and original Game Boy games through the Wii on your HDTV. I mean through the GameCube on your HDTV. But if all you care about is GameCube and Wii games, or even if just all you care about is GameCube games, this is probably the way to go. I mean, I, I love that I have a couple original GameCubes, but if I would have, if this would have, if this mod would have existed when I was buying these GameCubes, I would have probably never gotten an actual GameCube just because the price is so much more to do real GameCubes versus a soft mod of Wii with this mod. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, review of the Wii Duel. I think it's really awesome. It's a nice thing to have. I've got a fondness for the Wii, even though there's really only like 20 really good games for the Wii. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.